Hello again, FSC, Festech Speed and Custom Shop. Today we're going to work on this truck's factory air conditioning. This truck comes original with factory air, and God only knows how long ago it actually worked. When I took the engine out, the air conditioning compressor came out, the air conditioning clutch, and all the other accessories, power steering pump, water pump, alternator, all of that came out with it. When I took the condenser out of the truck, I found out really fast how contaminated the system was. There were some steel hard lines that attached from the hoses that went up into the condenser, and those things were absolutely full of sand, like literally sand. I don't know how that got in there, but somehow the entire system's completely demolished. But also, being a 74, she ran with R12 back in the day. So this, not only are we getting it back to factory air, but we're converting it over to R134A, which is the modern Freon we all run nowadays. This way he can get this thing serviced by anybody competent at an air conditioning shop. So I went ahead and ordered a new condenser. I got a new evaporator for this thing, being it's a 73, 74. LMC truck stocks evaporators for them, but they start like, I think, December 17th of 74, up to the last one made in 1979. So I was able to find NOS, meaning new old stock, a 1973 one, which pulls directly into this truck. 74 was kind of half year where they switched from one style to the next. I have that new evaporator. So we got new evaporator, condenser, new, new expansion valve that works with the 134A as opposed to the old R12, which is that little block thing sitting on the front of the firewall up behind the engine. The other thing with these trucks in this age range is you got to know whether you got dealer installed air conditioning or factory installed air conditioning. Apparently there were a lot of trucks that came from the factory, non-air conditioned, that had air conditioning added to them from the dealer. You gotta bear in mind, in the 70s, air conditioning was an option. Nowadays, you got people driving around brand new cars with air conditioning, power windows, power seats, power door locks, and they're on welfare. In 74, these things were options. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. In the 70s, you just sweat and you dealt with it. They were tough for generation back then. Anyway, enough about that. So. The idea is to get the factory air conditioning working. So now I'm going to show you the level of work it takes to get this all apart. One thing we noticed when we first took the engine out was somebody literally took the heater hose from the heater core and connected it to itself. It was also done the same way on the engine prior to me taking the old one out. So that concerns me. We're going to have to test that heater core and see if that thing's worth the crap. Either way, here's the expansion valve. This is a factory air conditioning unit, not a dealer installed air conditioning unit. And behind that access panel is the evaporator, but obviously that access panel is too small. The evaporator comes out from the inside of the truck, and that's where the nightmare begins. Okay, so now this is the inside of the truck. I've already started taking it apart. I took the glove compartment material out so you can get up inside there. Obviously, it's very dusty. The previous owner really didn't do a very good job in cleaning. The other thing I found underneath there was an old linear amplifier to the CB radio that's still up under the dash. This is the stuff that was in the glove compartment. Now, this is the original glove compartment material. This thing literally is 40-some years old. It's a 74, this being 2018. Okay, this thing is 44 years old. This material is just straight up garbage. It's just going to have to be replaced by a new one. You have to bend it to get it in and out, and uh, it doesn't take it when it's 44 years old. So go ahead and pitch that over with the old CB linear amplifier. So up under the dash we'll go. This is the box. I already started pulling some of the bolts out, but the evaporator is behind here. If I lift this actuator open should be able to see it right there. There's your evaporator. And your fresh air duct right here. I've already taken some of the bolts out, so it should come out reasonably well. We shall see soon. Okay, now people often wonder why it's a big deal 
to clean the leaves and crap out of your cowl, which are these vents, either on your hood, behind the hood, or even under your hood. Well, this cavity that goes underneath these vents continues underneath over where this antenna is and down. The air comes out this hole, which is on the inside of the cab, then goes into your evaporator. And as you see, this one is quite dirty. So even if it didn't have the air conditioning that worked, you still have restricted airflow. All right, so now the expansion valve has been removed and the access port opened. So what's left of the expansion valve. So that thing's toast, and the evaporator end, that's all garbage anyway. I'm going to take this off, which is a cover for the blower motor. If there was so much garbage all up in the evaporator on the inside of the truck, I'd really like to see what's in there. Besides, if I have it all apart, maybe I'll just put a new motor in there as well. Okay, so now I got the cover off, the blower comes off. You have to fish a Allen key to get that set screw out down there it's hard to see right there got to fish the allen key down in there to pop that set screw off and you can take the motor out the motor slides out the wire slides out of the casing right there but there's the evaporator on the other side of that damper door is the heater core so we're going to go ahead and pull that too and test it okay so now i have the evaporator out this little panel comes out along with it and that's the heater core and you could tell it's definitely leaking. There's the stains from the antifreeze all over it. So it's definitely shot, which is why I figured they took it out. So that's why the truck, my son was complaining it had no heat. So now we have the evaporator out and we have the heater core out. So stay tuned for part two of this particular repair because I'm waiting for a heater core. Once that comes in, we'll put all this stuff back together and we'll film it for you. So please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Once again, I am Steve Festcheck. This is Festcheck Speed and Custom Shop. What else can I build for you?